Hey everybody, happy day 14 of Coffee and Devotions with PD. Quick little shout out to Briarcrest, my seminary. Uh, just uh, so love and appreciate all of the uh, of the crew out there in Kieranport. And I know some of you uh, might be watching, so just wanted to just uh, give a shout out to you guys out in that region. Got my coffee this morning, my pastor mug, um, which I appreciate. Seems like after 28 years of pastoring, people still enjoy giving you a mug or a different version of the Bible. So I appreciate that immensely. So today is the beginning of Passover. And uh, as we enter into this very holy, very sacred season, I want to talk to you a little bit about blood. I don't know about you, but uh, when I see blood, I still get a little little squirmish, a lot better than I used to be from many years ago. Um, but the thing that I've really learned about blood is that it's something that really you don't want to see, but it is something you want to be able to know is existing and is experiential. And what I mean by that is that without blood in your body, you ain't living. The definition of blood is very simply this. It's the life-giving fluid that delivers oxygen to the cells of your body. Isn't that interesting? There's actually oxygenation in your blood and it, as it moves through your entire body, it strengthens you. Well, if you've ever heard people say that Christianity is a bloody religion, you're right. Because it takes blood to live. And it takes pure blood to live. You see, every single one of us, we were born with a sin nature. In other words, we were born with tainted blood. And it took somebody coming along and doing something about that. We call him the sinless Lamb of God. The one who takes away the sins of the world. See, in the Old Testament, they would, they would take that precious lamb and that lamb his life would be laid down, his blood would be shed for the sacrifice of people's sins, for the atonement of people's sins. But in the New Testament, there's a different lamb that showed up. And this lamb had blood like no other. This, this lamb was the son of God. This lamb was the one who had pure blood, sinless blood. And he came on the scene to do something that nobody else could ever do. Why? Because of his great love the infinite uncreated God of the universe the sinless one sent his only begotten son to the planet to pour out his blood innocent blood was shed for the guilty see every single one of us we had a death sentence written over our lives but it was Jesus who came on the scene and he atoned for that. He paid the price for that. He became our substitution. The greatest lamb has ever been known to the world shed his pure blood that we could have wholeness once again. Let's look at a couple of scriptures just really quickly. I want you to get a just a, I want you to really get a picture of this thing and how powerful it really is. Hebrews chapter nine. Verse 12, again, coming from the Passion Translation, which is just a, a beautiful translation to me personally. It says, and he, speaking of Jesus, has entered once and forever into the holiest sanctuary of all. Not with the blood of animal sacrifices, but the sacred blood of his own sacrifice. And he alone has made our salvation secure forever see the priest he could only go into the holy of holies once a year and he had to atone for his own sins and then the and then he had to atone for the sins of the people but we have a new high priest that came on the scene jesus christ and he entered once and forever into the holiest sanctuary of all it was called the cross he once and for all secured our salvation forever. The infinite uncreated God became one of us. He poured out his life blood, all the oxygenation of the purest essence of heaven in him was poured out upon humanity so that we 
could now have the oxygenation of his blood spiritually flowing through our lives. It's so powerful. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 goes on to say, Actually, nearly everything under the law was purified with blood, since forgiveness only comes through an outpouring of blood. We've seen so much bloodshed in, in the history of the world today. But the one that we look to as we begin Passover is the innocent Son of the living God who became sin for us who knew no sin so that we could become in right standing with God. Ephesians 1, 7 goes on to say, since we are now joined to Christ, we have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood, the total cancellation of our sins. That's what his blood did for us. It canceled all of the, the polluted bloodline that we had and causes us now, as it says, to have the cascading riches of his grace. Some people have said Christianity is a bloody religion, and it is indeed, and I'm thankful for it. This first day of Passover, I'm so glad that death has been passed over. Hey, look, every single one of us are gonna die, but you know what? The truest essence of death has passed over. It's one thing to die, but it's, it's another thing to experience death. And because we believe in Jesus Christ, we never truly have to experience death. I'm talking about spiritual death. For 1 John 1, 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all of our sin. How about it today? You might be sitting here going, Hey, PD, you know what? I'm pretty healthy. I know we're quarantined and whatnot, but I'm pretty healthy. I want to encourage you to get a blood transfusion if you've never gotten one before. And if you have, if you've received the forgiveness of your sins, that's awesome. Stay aware of how pure the blood of Jesus has made you to be in your thoughts, in your actions, and in every part of your life. And if you've never received the forgiveness of your sins, I want to encourage you to do that even right now. It's as simple as saying, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe what Jesus did on that cross, that he was buried and he rose again from the dead. I confess all of my sin to him. And I'm asking you, Jesus, pour your life's blood, your innocent blood, the Lamb of God, pour your blood into me. Oxygenate my mind, oxygenate every cell, every organ, every fiber of my being, because I wanna to belong to you. That's what it looks like to be a Christian. That's what it looks like to be a disciple and follower of Jesus Christ. And I wanna bless you today. And I wanna declare over you today these words, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood. And we thank you that there's power in the blood of Jesus and that protects every single one of us, our families, our friends from COVID-19. This very spirit of death that tries to come against the land and even against this world right now. And we right now declare the resurrected power of Jesus Christ to overcome it. We declare the blood of Jesus is applied to the door of our lives, our home, our families. Um, we thank you for the first responders. We thank you for the health officials, our government agencies, Lord God, all the frontline workers. We want to thank you right now, Lord God, that you are cleansing the land by your spirit because we trust in you. We commit our lives afresh to you today. Infuse us afresh, oxygenate us afresh by your precious blood. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. I so love spending time with you. You know what? It's so vital that we understand how powerful this blood really is. Stay strong, stay pure, stay clean, love God, love your neighbor, and don't forget to wash your hands. Thanks for the mug. Have a great day.